Hello, uh, my name is Donna Mae Kimmelarchuk, uh, and I'm a cardiac surgeon, but I'm currently a cardiac surgery fellow uh, at the Cleveland Clinic, hence the white uniform and white wall in the background. Uh, and I'm also Inuk, and that is singular for Inuit. Um, and for those uh, who may not know, um, Inuit, we used to be called Eskimo, but that is the uh, incorrect term to use. It's uh, Inuit. Um, and so today, I, my kind of intro or the talk is going to be about kind of my wish list items as uh, a young surgeon entering the workforce. And really, I come with the perspective of um, all my family members, my extended family members, are in the Arctic, are in the, uh, the territory of Nunavut, uh, so very remote and isolated. Uh, and so I really kind of take their experiences uh, to heart and that has really kind of shaped my framework for what I wish to see universally across Canada. Um, and so I think the first thing in addressing perioperative outcomes for Indigenous Canadians is for all Canadians, but absolutely healthcare providers, uh, to have a knowledge and understanding and be taught the colonial history of Canada because it's just not taught. Nobody knows it, right? Uh, or very few people do know the true history of colonization, residential schools, and how that has led to and what is intergenerational trauma and how that affects health and health outcomes for Indigenous peoples. There's very few healthcare providers that I think know about that. Um, I was not taught it in medical school or in postgraduate medical education, um, so I doubt other physicians are, right? And I think if you have that base level of knowledge, it leads to empathy, which I think can also lead to not being racist and hopefully even anti-racist. Um, and why I mention that is because I truly believe, and we have seen, and the government of Canada believes that there is systemic racism in healthcare in Canada, right? So the um, very public prime example of this is the death of Joyce Echaquan last fall when she went to go seek medical care. Um, the government of Canada has called for a national meeting with uh, policymakers, uh, deans of medical schools and nursing schools, uh, indigenous organizations, healthcare leaders and providers such as myself to come together and figure out how do we fix our system to not be, <laughs> to not be racist. So we'll see what comes of that, but absolutely there is racism in healthcare. Absolutely my family members have experienced it. So if you start with a base level of knowledge, I think that's the first key in um, eliminating that. And so take that one step further, I think all healthcare providers need to be taught how to provide culturally safe care and be taught anti-racism. Because again, we don't receive that teaching, or at least I didn't, and I haven't even started staff yet, so I'm, I'm fairly current on all this, I think. Um, I think it's really important to a uh, next wish list item that uh, healthcare providers are taught about the local resources in their community or in the city that they're practicing in. So for example, um, I trained in Ottawa. I'm in Oak. I didn't even know when I started that there was such thing as Larga House, which is where Inuit from Nunavut come and uh, stay f while they're receiving medical care, treatments, surgeries, uh, while they're recovering from surgery. Like that'd be an important thing to know when you're planning for discharge, when you're planning for follow-up, you know, or knowing about the Wabano Center in Ottawa, which is a um, health center for indigenous peoples um, with indigenous providers, with indigenous practices uh, at the center. That'd be an important resource to be able to talk about with your patients who might be seeking that type of care, that type of support. So I think that's incredibly important to, to be taught to resident doctors, physicians, students. Another wish list item I have is, um, it sounds really basic and really common sense, but I'm bringing it up because it's happened too many times that it's not common sense or it's not being done. And 
I don't know why, but that there are translators available and being utilized. Too many times have I seen nurses or resident doctors or doctors talking with a patient, not necessarily indigenous, but English is not their first language, not using the translator. It's very clear that the patient does not understand what is being communicated to them. This is completely unacceptable. And it's the same, I have family members who English is not their first language. They maybe don't feel so confident speaking in English. They absolutely do not understand medical terms that are being used, which is, that's a whole other topic. We need to speak in like layman's terms when talking to patients, but um, absolutely don't understand what's being said to them in these big, long medical English words. Use a translator and let's have resources available or resources there so the translator is available 24 seven, even just by phone. You know, that's huge, absolutely needed. And also like get, have like a card that's easily available or like a number that docs know what number to call or, you know, that is easy to find. Um, and so then kind of the last thing I'm thinking about, um, again, in the perspective of Inuit, thousands of kilometers away up in the Arctic, you know, in small isolated communities. And it's really about virtual care, virtual appointments. What's definitely one thing COVID has shown us is that these virtual appointments or um, meetings are completely feasible, right? I understand as a surgeon, you may want to see your patient in person to be able to examine them. And in cardiac surgery, that's very important. But I can still argue there are huge amount of, there's a huge amount of information you can gather virtually. And I think that's so important because patients up north, you know, they need to fly down to see specialized care or a surgeon or what have you. There could be a blizzard going on for a week or two and you can't fly out and that's delaying your care, right? Or um, there's mechanical problems and they can't get you out. Um, and far too often have I seen and heard of people back home presenting with much more advanced stages of disease notably cancer, which then alters their prognosis, right? It's too advanced or it's spread, you can't operate on it. Or for example, as a surgeon, coronary artery disease or your valvular disease is much more advanced, uh, which then, you know, perhaps has led to things like pulmonary hypertension or depressed ejection fraction, heart failure. Well, now the surgery becomes a little more complex and the risk increases. So, Absolutely, we need to adjust our systems to be more open and more willing to do these virtual appointments. Even if to just get in touch with a surgeon in Winnipeg or Ottawa to have that initial assessment so they can then order the tests that they want or, or get the ball rolling on what they need to do next, I think is, is huge. Um, so I think really my wish list items all really stem from wanting to see equitable access to care and access to excellent care. Regardless of where you live in the country, regardless really of your ethnicity, you should have the same access and the same excellent care. And so that means, you know, anti-racism, earlier access or earlier appointments with the specialist or the surgeon or, or getting tests done um, to ensure that you have the same outcome and same quality of care as any other Canadian. Very quickly, just to wrap up, because to talk about a study that was published this month that I was a part of, a meta-analysis looking at perioperative outcomes for Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians in Canada. And we know that Indigenous peoples have worse outcomes than non-Indigenous peoples. We found in our meta-analysis that there was a relative risk of 30% increased mortality if you were Indigenous in Canada. So we need to do better and we can do better. And um, so I really look forward to our Q&A discussion a bit later on uh, and to see what your thoughts are on all of this. Thanks so much.